just be normal. <laughs> How you doing? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Educated Clone Snap channel. We've got a brand new OTA today. Galactus is dead. That's my title. I actually don't think Galactus is dead dead, but I do think it's going to be somewhat harder. And we have a lot of other topics. This one ended up being like big discussion about some of the changes and like the approaches and stuff. But yeah, hopefully it'll be interesting and let's begin. All right. First things first, most important change so far. We've seen Galactus is dead. No, well, hmm. I, I don't think it's dead, but honestly, clickbait. But, <laughs> but I do think it is majorly weakened, right? We, we've seen Galactus. I would say like it's super dominating right now in the meta a lot of people are playing galactus just because it's the best thing with Elias. so if you win the galactus lane you have no chance to lose essentially you have priority and you can play Elias. it doesn't matter what they play you go first you Elias everything and it and you always win right so that's been annoying right for a lot of players been frustrating it's been great for galactus players right another time in the sun um, it's definitely a polarizing card in in its play patterns, right? In forcing the game to be one lane instead of three, and then you also have the insta win of Eliot. So obviously some people are not happy about that. So definitely those people, most players who are not playing Galactus are gonna be happy with Galactus nerfs. Definitely think Galactus was one of the, if not the best performing card or archetype right now. So I do think that might die down a little bit. Now some could argue why not nerf Eliath, right? Eliath is making big changes in priority battles. It used to be where you had to, you cared about not having priority so that you could dodge the shang and stuff. Now you care about having priority so that you can win that third lane with Eliath. Now, I think Eliath as a card actually is not bad. I think it adds a lot of thought process and caring about priority where we didn't have that before. And it allows people to kind of switch the script in that, hey, you want to contest a lane or you want to do nothing until the end of the game. Well, you don't have, you can't do that anymore. You have to kind of care about the early game, care about pressure and not just hope, oh, I play my three cards at the end and that matters, right? So definitely don't mind Eliot, but I do think Eliot in conjunction with Galactus is super toxic and I can definitely see um, the change here. Now, I, d I don't know if Goliath Galactus players are going to be happy with this, right? Like, there, there's been a lot of Galactus nerfs, right? It used to be 6-7 or 6-2 and then it was a 6-7, then near priority, now it's a 6-5, then near priority. So... You know, Galactus is supposed to be one of those expensive cards, one of those cards that, you know, dictates, you know, controls itself and, and says, hey, I'm a big bad, you have to deal with me. Where um, maybe it's not doing that as much anymore. Now, I don't think it's it's unplayable because if you can play Galactus down with priority, right, your opponent misses the 50-50, uh, turn five, turn six, you you always win, right? If you have Galactus down... With priority, you always win. It's just going to be a lot harder to do that. Um, a lot of people are doing Hobgoblin into Galactus, which meant that you need 15 power to contest that. That's a lot harder now, right? 13 power, um, especially if you're guessing correctly over two turns, is fine. I've definitely seen people do something like Hobgoblin one lane. You, why am I helping? Why am I helping Galactus players? But I, I've seen some people. Uh, do well still where it doesn't really matter what the stats of Galactus are. Like even if it was a 6-1, it would still win the game the same way because Elias says, hey, I always win. So uh, I do think it's still playable, but even less circumstances are available for Gal Gal Galactus now. So I, I think a lot of people that like Galactus are not happy about this, of course, but definitely for the overall health of the game, I think this is needed. Because right now, I would say Galactus is like in, in a lot of the best performing decks. So 
Um, the metrics probably were just saying, hey, Galactus is too powerful. Now, let's see what they have to say, of course. So we expected Ally to find a fast one in Galactus, which wasn't a problem in and of itself. Exciting new cards shouldn't hit the cutting, the cutting room floor because existing cards might like them too much. Especially if that card is Galactus. The whole reason we reworked him is to give us a knob that can rein him in. Given his metrics spiked well outside our acceptable ranges for over a week, we're taking a harder line with this change based on the impact we need. We like Galactus before Eliath, so that's our target range for his performance. So they're not nerfing Eliath because Galactus is too strong. They like what Eliath's doing to the meta, but they're going to nerf Galactus to kind of bring him down before Eliath came in. That's what they're saying here. And, and I definitely think his metrics were crazy before, like before this change. So we'll have to see. Definitely, we'll have a lot of comments about this. But yeah, definitely an interesting, most impactful change. I do hope to see less Galactus. Honestly, it, it it's a bit much. Like I, I'm like a lot of my games are against Galactus. Not 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 most of them, but like there's a it's a noticeable amount where it's like yeah, here we go again. All right, so. But yeah, it definitely makes them easier to deal with. Next up, this change I'm not, this next change I'm not, like, I think it's a bit much, right? So Kitty Pride's moving from a 1-2 to a 1-0. So that's a big deal, right? 1-0. And Kitty Pride's a card that's in so many decks. And it's a card that has combos based on its power. Like, something very important that's going to be rained down a lot here is trying to combo with Shuri, trying to combo with like Forge Shuri into Kitty Taskmaster last turn, right? Like that's a lot of stats to lose because you're double dipping on the stats of Kitty, right? The two becomes a four, the four, and then the four gets copied to Taskmaster, right? So if you're losing two power, that's almost like, that's a ton of power across the, the game that you're going to be losing there. So quite substantial nerf. I think it's a bit much. Obviously, um, the nerf is not because I don't think the nerf this nerf is because Kitty Pride is is too good. Though you could argue Kitty Pride is too good, but I I think it has more to do with this next card we're going to talk about. Also, Bloodstone. So this is a card coming out um, very recently with this. If you play another card to fill a location, give it plus three power, and I think that's the main reason they're play testing this card with Kitty, and it's too strong. And they're like, well, we don't want to nerf the new card. We want the new card to be exciting so that people buy it, so that it's interesting, people talk about it, right? So what they're doing instead is they're nerfing Kitty Pride preemptively, which, I mean, I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but it is the approach they're taking there. They, they seem to be on a philosophy that they don't necessarily... You know, they don't they they don't care about changing the meta every time a new card comes out. Like, hey, a new card, a lie comes out, meta changes, that's fine, right? Like people are talking about it. It's I agree, it's better than hey, new card comes out, it sucks, no one talks about it, no one cares, you know, ignore. Right? Like they'd rather it new card talk about it, it's exciting, but maybe it breaks some archetypes and then we we adjust, right? Like that seems to be their philosophy. It's it's worse if you're um hoping to make sure your resources always get used correctly, right? Because let's say you get the spotlight for a card and then it gets nerfed, right? And then it's like, well, why did I get it, right? Like Galactus was in a spotlight fairly recently. And if you're like, oh, I want Galactus because it's going to be good. And now this change happens, you're going to not be, feel really great about that kind of change. But that's kind of the nature of this game design. If cards are like overperforming, they're going to get nerfed, right? And that always hurts people who main that archetype so yeah that's that's my thoughts i think they're nerfing kitty because of the bloodstone here and i i i would have like if you're gonna do, i would have much rather seen a one one but once again we don't know how it interacts with bloodstone and, and it's probably will be too good once it comes out right so uh, honestly i mean just change the the bloodstone before <laughs> before you change kitty but i i could see kitty getting a, an adjustment i just think like maybe two powers too much so yeah let's see what they have to say kitty's been places seen things been a fun ride he's been an integral player in the meta game best deck at least four different times 
And each of those decks were meaningful distinct. Yeah, so they're saying Kitty's been very strong um, and has really good combos with Angela and Hulkbuster. However, as we continue to make similar synergies, we want other cards to get an opportunity to compete with Kitty. This change is preemptive. As we expect, Kitty will be too strong in October without it. So yeah, basically in October, this card is coming out and they're saying, oh, Kitty's going to be broken with this card. I still think Kitty will be very strong in October anyways, right? Like it doesn't mean, this doesn't mean you can't use the combos. The combo is a little bit worse. And if you're playing any other deck that's not using that combo, Kitty just is going to feel much worse. So we're likely to continue to explore different executions of Kitty. So people are, they're already like, people are not going to like this change. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's super fair. So uh, something I want to mention is I've been thinking that Nebula is really good. Like recently, I've been thinking like, hey, Nebula is a really good card right now. And like the only weakness I really had for Nebula was that, oh, Kitty shuts it down, right? If someone plays Kitty into Nebula, well, then... Their, you know, your their kitty is always going to, like, make sense to play into the nebula lane, and you really can't do anything about it. So, um, if kitty loses priority, if there's less people playing kitty, one well, nebula just like jumps out to me as being like, oh my god, you should be playing that. So that's something to think about for sure. Damn, we're really going slow on these changes, for sure. But yeah, definitely, I feel, yeah. I don't know about this kitty change for sure. Um, Psylocke here, Psylocke's going from a 2-1 to a 2-2. That's good, right? S Psylocke needed a buff, honestly, for sure. So it kind of feels like a mini Zabu that doesn't get hit by uh, Mobius. I mean, it's, it's, it's a change in the right direction, for sure. I wonder if you could make it like a two three and it'd still be fine. That's that one. That one I'm not sure about, right? For but sure, but definitely an interesting, an interesting change. I don't know if it's like, oh my god, we're going to be playing Psylocke more with the extra one power. A lot of people are using it and carnaging it anyways. So it's like you didn't don't have to carnage it anymore, which, which is nice. So. I mean, I, I definitely think that there's some possibilities for this one. This one, I'm not really as... I don't I don't see, like, oh my god, here, you're going to play this now with Psylocke change. We've had this change eternally for a while, but we wanted to win and see how the dust settles on some of the live decks that played energy ramp and cost reduction. We hope Psylocke can eventually join the Electro Magic Wave crowd as a common way to push for big plays. Ideally, she maintains a distinct identity for those options at two cost. Yeah, I mean, she's Zabu, right? Like, that's her identity right now. Um, I think a 2-3 would make her distinct from Zabu. Because Zabu, it's like, hey, you're, you're Zabu, but then you get... Turn 6, you get another power spike. Turn 5, you kind of get another power spike because you, you can go a 4-drop and a 2-drop. So that, that makes it a little bit better, right? It, this is like a worse Zabu in every metric. Well, not every metric. In a lot of metrics, if you play her on 2. Whereas, if you know... I, I guess with Psylocke, you can play her on three and then play two five, something like that, which is is fair. Like, it's like Electro on five. There's there's definitely some lines to it. I, I, I think a two three would make her distinct, right? Two two, yeah. Um, but, you know, energy ramp can become too good, so I could see why they're being careful with it for sure. But yeah, definitely, definitely a change. We'll have to see if this one is very meaningful. Next one's pretty cool. Squirrel Girl's going from a 1-1 one, one to a 1-2. Li I've liked this card. Always think it could be better. Uh, but it has some synergy with Kazar. It has some synergy with Patriot. So there's definitely some reasons to play this card. However, you know, right now it's not really being used except for Kazar, mostly. I, I don't really think I see this card at all. So definitely can see a buff to it. Seems reasonable to me. Uh, what they have to say is, like Mysterio and Shana, Squirrel Girl's total power has been on the low side from her space. She takes up among your locations. She's largely been confined to supporting early Kazar decks for new players and death bait deck in competitive play. Yeah, but death, death bait decks don't work right now because of Mobius. So 
basically she's disappeared i assume we're glad to have her continue on in both of these roles but she's a fun and appealing enough card to give her a bit more power she's been acting pretty spooky since this change you should be careful walking through central park next month that that's talking about the bundle but they do this all the time anyways where there's a bundle coming up so they'll they'll buff a card or they'll adjust a card right they have this bundle where the scrolls are also getting a variant which is something they haven't done for uh the secondary art of cards where tokens and stuff they don't really get any new art but they did that for score girls so they're trying to promote that i'm i don't care i think that's fine uh but yeah definitely makes more sense i don't know if that's gonna like this is gonna be a change that makes her see play but it's fine i think she deserves a buff and then the last change we have is definitely one of the more impactful ones uh snow guard is getting a nerf i would say this is pretty clearly a nerf where the hawks are the hawk and the bear are becoming three cost cards so snow guard itself is not changing so it's still a one drop so you could argue like maybe this could be a, like a two drop or something like that but it's, but i'd I'd prefer it be a one drop anyways snow guard itself is not changing but the hawk is going from a two three to a three three and then the Bear is going from a 2-3 to a 3-4. That's pretty much saying that the bear is worse, which is true. I agree, the bear is worse. But sometimes I like the bear in that it doesn't do anything. Like, sometimes I like the locations, right? And I'm like, okay, I don't want to um, turn off the locations. So that's something. Another thing that happens a lot, like, let's say Sinister London comes up on 2, right? You play Snow Guard on one, a lot of times it gives you priority, and then you can play the Hawk on two, turn off that London, they don't get that that copy effect, right? Like, things like that. Like, that's been very nice. That's going to be gone. So this is a pretty big nerf in terms of Snow Guard gave you something to do turn two every time. Like, you were like, hey, you play this on one, you get something to do turn two. That's a great feeling. So now you don't really have that. So this is a pretty big nerf to Snow Guard. Like in terms of how you play her and how it feels. Uh, is that justified? I do think Snow Guard before was too good. So I can see it. It just feels bad because some people may have you opened some spotlights to get this and a lot, of course. But, uh, you know, this was like a motivating factor. Now it's going to be like, hmm, maybe it wasn't super worth to spend all my resources for Snow Guard, right? Because it got nerfed. Like, it was too strong, though, before. But... You know, the buff nerf cycle feels weird, especially with the, in the context of um, series drops, or not series drops, uh, spotlights, because, like, this was buffed when it was during a spotlight. So a lot of people were like, oh, wow, this is really good. This is really strong, almost broken. We should get it, right? And now, you know, two weeks later or so, it's like, hey, Snow Guard was too good. Let's nerf it. But then a lot of people already spent their resources getting the Snow Guard on the, in the spotlights, and you can't, there's no refund or anything right hey you can you can get you can lose snow guard <laughs> i think that won't work anyways but like there's no refund so it's just like yeah well deal with it right so definitely definitely interesting change i don't love it but i understand it because it was too good like i i was fundamentally considering putting snow guard in every deck i ever build going forward because it was that good like as as a as a principle like change it if if it doesn't make sense but like hey what goes in every deck mobius right now snow guard jeff you know that kind of three yeah that, and then Eliath. <laughs> you know and Eliath. bam and then let's start thinking about deck design from there um but yeah definitely definitely a big change for snow guard definitely think we'll see a lot less play and i understand it but i'm not happy about it so let's see what they have to say about it. We're happy that Snowbar's rework brought her in from the code. However, the bulk of her strength has proven to be in concert with Loki and the Collector. That is not true, in my opinion. I, the, the, Loki is too good. So Loki works with everything that has any synergies. And then the Collector is just really good in tandem with Loki. right? And when you combo it together, it makes a lot of sense. Well, you were playing, you were playing Snow Guard on one. Sometimes you're playing Snow Guard on four with Loki as well, right? Which is fair, right? And in Loki decks, this doesn't matter. Like, this doesn't affect Loki decks at all, right? Like, Loki doesn't care. Like, they don't play the card anyways. They don't play the the, the bear or the hawk anyways. They just swap them, so. 
you know, in Loki, there's this, like, Loki has not been touched, right? And Loki has been a problem. I will say it's, it's less problematic with Mobius. I will give it, like, Mobius does lower Loki somewhat, but Loki's still good in Mobius. Like, it's not like Loki's unplayable. The collector Loki is just, like, tons of power. Like, even if Loki doesn't do anything, it's still tons of power. So, it's it's still playable, it, like, even even with the collector chain. So, I, I, I don't know. It's just because Loki's a season pass, essentially. Like, I'm I'm pretty sure that's the, the reasoning. Like, if Loki wasn't a season pass card and was, like, two months ago, right, it would be changed, right? But because they wanted to sell, they're not doing that. Anyways, let's, let's continue. Um... Where the extra cards you generate are primary reward, the auroras are secondary. Yes, we don't mind that much. The auroras are situation themselves, but they don't need to be so efficient in that case either. The bear is gaining more power because the effect is proven far weaker of the two. So they're saying they're fine with Snow Guard being a Loki card, but even when you're not playing Snow Guard in Loki, Snow Guard is still performing exceptionally well, is what they're saying. And I, I agree with that. But they're saying we want Snow Guard to be more of a Loki card than a universally good card. That seems to be the direction here. And I get it. Because the, the problem with Snow Guard is too good, right? So I get it. It's just like it feels sad. You know, that that's all. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. But over, those are the changes we have. I would say I'm not as happy as overall on, on this, uh, this patch. I'm I I like I understand the Galactus change and pers personally I'm happy the Galactus getting nerfed but I can see the frustration for Galactus Blue I can see the frustration I get it right so I I get it I you know but there's bias here um, Kenny Pride is for uh, the October I think it's a bit much I think you should maybe just nerf the. Uh, nerf bloodstone right if if it's proving to be too strong if you made it plus two power instead of plus three power i think that would be a little bit stronger or a little bit fairer right like when you like when you think about this like this card with a card like mysterio right mysterio plays all the cards so with mysterio you're getting a plus three power as long as you played you fill all locations like so last turn right you could do like last turn uh Bloodstone plus Mysterio. That's only five power, right? So you could play a one drop as well. Uh, and the Mysterio will, like, if you if you bast the Mysterio, right? Like, so if you bast the Mysterio and, and the Bloodstone, right? So bast is one power. So you'd have to bast early, right? But you'd have a two, three Bloodstone and you'd have three power Mysterios. With the plus three power, that's six power Mysterios. So the Mysterios, as long as you fill the locations with Mysterio, is giving you six, 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 fifty. 18 power like that's too much that's already a problem it has nothing to do with kitty right like like hey like this card's too good anyways i don't know hey, but yeah moving on sidelock is fine i i don't know if it's gonna do much and then scroll girl is fine like it needs a buff I, i'm fine with it and then the snow girl i think is understandable i'm not happy about it because i love the card but i i get it so i'm not gonna like you know I, I I already see the you know, the bias there. Anyways, those are the changes there. Definitely, definitely, this feels like a, a one that's gonna spark some conversation one way or another. But what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and have a wonderful rest of your day. Once you watch him, you won't go back. He'll teach you tomorrow, snap. Your skills will be improving. How you doing? You'll hit infinity and won't go back.